Bring them in, Private. Stop. Thank you, gentlemen. I think we can now begin. Pick up the Bible and read aloud the oath. I swear that the evidence I shall give before this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. On a faraway island, at the top of a mountain, there once lived a mighty dragon guarding a fabulous pearl. One day, as the dragon slept, a stranger crept up and stole his fire, casting it down into the gully below. When the dragon awoke, he was defenseless. Without his fire, he could do nothing to stop the stranger from taking the pearl and sailing away across the South China Sea. And ever since the pearl was stolen, a curse is said to be put on all strangers who enter the gun. According to the legend, they should be lured in, never allowed to return. Major Foster. Sir. Close the gun. We. Running along, of course. The Penetaran River. From top to bottom, a descent of nearly 3,000 meters. Now, the terrain is believed to be savage. Steep, rocky, dense jungle, waterfalls, huge boulders, some as large as houses. Now, uh, this area, from the peak of Mount Kinabalu down to the upper reaches of the gully, has been explored. From the bottom to the northwest, very near here, the nearest village. Kampong Melika. In between, an area of 200 square miles, totally unexplored. The densest, most difficult terrain there is on Earth. Now, the route we're planning to take was attempted by the Japanese during the 1942 occupation of Borneo, uh, and more recently by Robert New, the uh, explorer, in 1991, but uh, he too was forced to abandon his expedition. Ah, Corporal Britain. Look, glad you could make it. Uh, take a seat. Now, we were just discussing Robert New's expedition. Perhaps you could share your thoughts on that with us. Yes, sir. As far as I can tell, his main problem was rations. He and his partner only had five days. And then when they got into trouble, he broke out of the gully. He says there's an escape track high up on the right-hand side, but he and his partner both nearly died of thirst trying to find it. So your conclusion is? Take more rations and stay with the river all the way through. Which is precisely what I intend to do. Good. Done your homework. Uh, cheer us, nice. Now then, what other lessons can we learn from Robert Lee's expedition? The last couple of page. Now don't grit your doing it superstar bit again. And think it was a race. Excellent, Mayfield. Keep it up. <laughs> Cocky little bugger, hey? It's what we need in there. <laughs> Come along, give the others a chance, eh, King of the Rock? <laughs> Come on, Brit. Hey, well done, Brit. Get yourself sat down, lad. Well done, indeed. Excellent. Come on, you others. Now, there'll be ten of us, five regulars, two territorial army, and three chaps from the Hong Kong wing of our unit who will be meeting out there. Now, we're all of varying ability, but I am totally confident 
between us, we have the expertise to get the job done. Not fairly easy to be, but... <laughs> now, Major Foster and I, six years ago, attempted to enter the gully from the bottom and climb up, but uh, it proved impossible. The only way is from the top. Over Mount Pinabalu, and down what is called the point of no return. Nearly 2,000 feet of sheer cliff face. And that's where we'll be going. The papers were sent off months ago. There must be some sort of record. Surely they haven't just disappeared. To find no explanation for this, I can only go by the evidence before my eyes. Here are all the applications for permits to climb the mountain. Yours is not among them. This is a bad omen. So where does that leave us? The permits are necessary because the gully is a very dangerous place. Our people do not go here. They believe the spirits will not allow them to pass through alive. Superstitious nonsense. Oh, I fail my old one. I assume you have the power to award some discretionary permits. After all, as the man on the ground, it would be you they would consult. Mm -hmm. Yes? Then I suggest you contact whoever it is you need to contact and obtain whatever documents are necessary, because I will not allow this expedition to be derailed. Not by anyone. <laughs> I can, perhaps, contact Kuala Lumpur and try to arrange something. Thank you. How many days' rations will you be taking with you? Ten. Ten. This is perhaps not enough. Thank you. I know what to expect. Have an expression in our country. You do not teach ducks to swim. I wish the British Army good luck. Thank you. All right, uh, gentlemen, let's just... Uh, Stop here for a minute, shall we? In ten days' time, it's my intention to gather each and every one of you together again and congratulate you on being the first men to successfully navigate Lowe's Galley. Now, we have a hard climb ahead of us and an equally hard descent into the galley. But we have a chance here to grab a piece of history. Now, I expect this to be professional, but uh, I also want you to think of us as a group of mates. So, uh, first names from now on. Major Foster will be Ron. I should be Robert. Is that clear? Well, good luck. Good hunting. Oh, thank you, Ron. <laughs> thank you. That's, uh, that's enough. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get going, shall we? Thank you. Where are the others? Oh, uh, lost them about half an hour ago, sir. You'll be. Well, uh, quick as you can, eh? Try and catch them up. Here you are.
It's ridiculous. Tell me that, Cap. How did the Colonel seem? Didn't look well physically, sir. But he didn't seem right in his mind either. My opinion, Colonel's judgment seemed to have been affected that day. Something seemed to happen to him the moment he stepped on the mountain. Well, now, uh, everybody, attention, please. Uh, this hasn't been the most auspicious of starts, so I thought. Um, before we carried on, we'd uh, sit down and uh, discuss things. So, if uh, anybody's got anything to say, here's your chance. Bob's got an idea. Yeah, right. Well, I thought perhaps we'd go clockwise around the river. Well, the way I see it, we're not all going to make it. Thank you, Bob. Sit down. Ron, I don't see what all the fuss is about. Yes, it was a hard day. I don't know that me and the Chinese lads, we struggled a bit. But we're all here. We're all ready to fight another day, Robert. Yeah. What about you, Steve? I've got this headache, Robert. But you're happy to go on? Sure. Kevin, you? Yes. Good. Now, Bob. Well, uh, tomorrow I think, you know, Robert, uh, in all honesty, Lloyd. Right? I think mean, all this is going to get through. Well, you don't think so? Well, the Hong Kong lads was obviously having trouble, and... <coughs> well, I was. I could see Ron once. <sighs> anyway. The mountain, what? The galley. Right. My idea is split us into two groups. First five should continue down into the galley. The other five should go back down the mountain now, go by road to the village of Campbell Millencat, work their way back up the gully as a support group. That way all ten of us stays involved, and the ones that's not as fit, don't all back the others. I'll come right out and say that I should be one of the five in the support group. Me, the Hong Kong lads, and Ron. That leaves Steve, Brett, Pete, Richie, and yourself to go on down into the gully. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. <laughs> But I think you've already heard the depth of commitment there is to this expedition succeeding. I'm not prepared to betray that. Oh, come on! It makes sense and you know it. This is a mile hole in the ground we're going into. Day one and look at them, look! They're hanging on the chin straps already. No, I am in command of this expedition. Yes, but I'm going to have to get them through. Who the hell do you think you are? What? I said, who the hell do you think you are? I'm just trying to do my job. Sit down. Just sit down. Richard! Corporal Mayfield! Yes! Sir. I am the commanding officer here. And I have made my decision. We all go on. Boys. What did you say? He wants us to make a start. I think it's slow. They'll catch up with us in the afternoon. He wants to use this morning as a rest period for them. Ready? Let's go.
Out on a training walk this morning to improve their stamina. <laughs> Since then, he's had to move him half loads at a time, double him back. He's had him up and down that bloody hill like the Grand Old Juvie York. <laughs> he's out of his mind. Cheers, mate. Just about enough, lad, to catch up with you lot. I would have gone out of my mind. You know, they've been going 15 hours to do a journey that took us three, and they're still not here. We'll catch up. We'll get back, of course. We've got 10 days, Pete. But the rations have been very carefully planned. We've got nowhere fast today, and tomorrow we're going to be sitting on our asses waiting for them. That leaves us eight. And we're still not in the gully. You all right, Robert? <laughs> you lazy, arrogant bastards. Right then, Colonel Neil. Morning, Vic G. Thank you, Bill, lad. No, thank you. Yeah. How are you feeling? Don't look very well. <coughs> I'll be all right. Where are you? Um, a couple of k's further up. Look, I'm, I'm sorry you felt so strongly last night. But I have to do what I think is right for the whole group. That's okay, sir. Um, look, I'd like to press on ahead. Where to? I'd like to go over the point of no return. It seems to me this conversation between Mayfield and Colonel Neal is critical. Now, you say you were present when they spoke. That's correct. <laughs> what was all that about, Richie? in there. It'd be suicide. Well, I ain't looking down there till I have to. Right, I'm having a fag and I'm going to make the rock with Lady Palm and her five daughters. Maybe the last sex ever, huh? Right, lad. Come on. Let's do it. Too risky. Why not wait for the morning and give the colonel a chance to catch us up? We can't wait. Right, come on, Jack. Take care. It's very slippery here. Come on, come on. Sir. Come on, Brett. You need us to help carry the test. Oh, how the hell did that get up here? Brett. Richie's gone.
Come on, what did you can? Not far now. Uh, why don't we leave it till tomorrow? Give you a chance to recover. No, Rob. We must regroup. I'm going to go, guys. I'm going to go. Colonel Neil, sir. Permission to speak. Yes? What is it? Sir, we should not enter this place. We should not disturb the spirits. Really, Kevin, this is all so much mumbo jumbo. Once we catch up with the others, we'll be fine. They're waiting for us at the bottom now. So, we are afraid of this place. We should not go in there. The purpose of this expedition is to confront our fears and overcome them. Ron, we begin the descent at first light. Right, Robert. Right. <laughs> ah, the worst one was on Arctic training. <laughs> yeah, you know this one, Richie. Well, you've probably all done it, but you have to jump into a hole in the actual ice with your kit on, strip off, and run to a little hut they got nearby. Well, I ain't got as much blubber on me as Stevie Pagey up there. Oh, right. So I've gone in my head like, get in, get out, and run like buggery. Well, I've jumped in, and I've had a bit of trouble, but I've managed to get myself out, and now I'm colder than an icicle on a witch's tip. <laughs> and I've just run. I've just run. Trouble is, I haven't run towards you yet. I've just run in the direction I'm facing, and I was halfway to Sweden bollock naked before they stopped me and brought me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice bunch of lads they were. We had some laughs up there. You got any kids, Bob? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a son, Robert. We'd like to have had more, but... Well, we just think of ourselves as blessed that we got him. Yeah. Smashing kid he is. How about you, Brett? You got a missus? No, mate. That was Bob. Bob, honestly, stunner she was, right? Stunner. What's he gonna do? Gives her the boot. Shut up, Steve. <laughs> Any kids? No. Oh, maybe one day, eh, hey, Brett? What is this, Bob? All right, all right, keep your hair on. Conversation over. Thank you. 
doing here? I just came to see Daisy. I thought I told you to ring before you came round. Yeah, right. What are you doing? I'm taking the tally. No! Leave it alone! It's mine. I only want what's mine. Give it back! It's all we've got! I think this is fair, don't you? You get everything, I get the tally. You're sick! I wish I'd never met you! All right, then. You keep it. No! Weird feeling. The first people ever to walk through Lowe's Gully. What No way. I'm waiting here. Follow us trail. We'll wait till them further down. Come on, Pete. Shift your arse. Don't be a donkey. I think I'm going to name something in here after my son. What's that? I don't know. A nice big waterfall or something like that. Yeah, Robert's Falls. I like the sound of that. Hey. The bird's back again, Stevie. The one bird in Malaysia that does fancy Stevie Page. <laughs> there you go, Bob. Robert's bloody falls. Which way was it going? Up or down? Down! 
Oh, Pete, are you sure they were going down? Listen, the guy on the rope was still. I mean, he wasn't actually moving, but I'm sure he was they going down. They were going back up. Come on! How can you say that? Because they were right near the top. They obviously had a little go at it, and then they decided there was no way that we were going to get down there. I could see them. Oh, you said you didn't see them, Richie. I saw Neil. No one else, but I could see him. What was he doing? Well, he was, he was waving his arms about. That's what I saw. Well, it could mean he was trying to get the guy on the rope to go back up. Huh? Yeah. He'd be in more trouble going up, Yeah, listen, why don't we just wait for the mess? No, we can't do that, Pete. Why not? Because we haven't got enough food. Look, mate, if they are coming down, we waste at least two days waiting for them to catch up. If they're going up, we waste it for nothing. I don't think we can take the risk, Pete. You're out of order, Brett. You're way out of order. The man on the rope was going down, sir. And I made it clear at the time that I thought we should have waited for the other party to catch up. But did you not say at the time that you couldn't be sure whether he was going up or down? Yes, sir. But we shouldn't have left them, sir. But the others needed our help. We should have waited for them. Thank you. And how long did you wait for the others? Um, until about midday the next day. And was it your decision then to go on without them? I honestly did not think that he would bring the others over the point of no return. I didn't ask that. I asked, was it your decision? What are you doing, Brick? Just leaving an eye for the honest. Why? You've seen that descent. There's no way he's bringing the Oncon lads down there. It'd be suicide. What did he say up there, Richard? What exactly did he say? I asked him if we could get going, and he said, OK. OK. Was it your decision? Only partly. Senior NCO was just as much caught in Britain's decision as mine. If you've got something to say to me, Pete, you say it out loud. What is that you're writing about me, eh? Let me guess. Nasty Corporal Britain wouldn't let me wait for the Colonel, and now without an officer here, I don't know what to do. Is that right, Pete? There's no way he's brought them down. You can kid yourself all you like, Brent. Oh, Pete, mate, what does it take to convince you? Neil is a Rupert. Ruperts don't know anything. All they do know is how to not read a map. I know them, mate. I've done the course. I've seen them for what they are. You've done OTC? Yeah, I've done OTC. And what happened, Brett? My dad wasn't a brigadier. That's what happened. So that's what this is all about. That's why we've left them behind. 
I can see this busted out of officer training. Pete, you shut up, man, will you? It doesn't mean nothing, mister. Put your bullet through your head and walk away. Keep steady, steady! That's it, keep the legs still. Now, just free fall gently towards me. Just take it nice and slow. Whoa! Whoa, whoa! Easy does it. You made it, Mixer. You made it. Come on, get over here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't get over there. Come back. All right, Rob. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> now, let's see where these bloody jackmen are, shall we? Ah, Stevie. Stevie. Oh. Cram! Cram! Ah. Fuck, this is ridiculous! Ah. Oh. Ah. Yeah. We've moved, what, 1,500 ah. metres in the last two days? There's no way the food's going to last. If we get in trouble, we can always survive off the land down here. No, we can't. Why not? You can do one thing or the other in a jungle, Pete. You can move through it or live off it. You can't do both. Okay. So Brett may have read some bollocks and some Paris textures, but that doesn't mean we can't go on, does it? Can you two stop arguing for one minute? Jeez! So, there's a way down back there. About a rope slung. All right, then, Richard. Okay? Okay. Well, can we get going, please? Keep an eye on the dealer, okay? Can you feel it? 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 Can you feel
Good boy. Good lad, good lad, good lad. Good lad, good lad. Good lad. Fucking eh? It's not broken. Good lad. Say is, Pete. <laughs> Thank God you landed on your head. Otherwise, you'd really have been in trouble. Good man. Has anybody got any painkillers? Is mine up? No. Richie? Yeah. What are we going to do about him? What do you mean? What if it gets any worse? What if he dies? We'll be okay. Here you go, mate. You take these with some water, you'll be alright. Nothing's changed, bro. Maybe you're happier with me like this. But I haven't forgotten any of what's happened before. Yeah, whatever you say, Pete. This means, don't you? Yes, well, clearly, from the state of the camp the others left here a while ago. We must therefore assume that they are waiting for us further up the gully. For uh, whatever reason. Come on. Stay in there. lead off. Get him off what? me. Get him off me. Bob, it's a leech. Go on. Yeah, like a little bastard. Well, it's a good sign. It means we're getting close at the river. If we get down the river, things have got to get easier. Yeah. Till we hit the next waterfall. The place is starting to give me the creeps, Bob. Yeah, right. I'm climbing around for two days. Still no nearer to the river. <laughs> All right. Give me my blood back, you little bastard. Yeah, squeal all you like, mate. <sighs> Come on, then, boys. Hey? Hmm? You ready? Mm -hmm. Hey. You're right, mate. Yeah. Come on then. Boys, let's go, eh? Horrible crank to go out of seven, boys. He used to shave his tongue every morning, we were at, because he'd been dishing out bitches. <laughs> anyway, he asked me where I'm from. So I says, I'm a West Country boy. He says, you're a country bumpkin. He is, it's lying, he has. I don't like bumpkins. <laughs> they shag their sisters. <laughs> Steady, Pete. All right. Okay. Anyway, he says, boy, I like summer. Come on. <coughs> Thing is, <coughs> going 
go shoot yourself for, you save yourself a bit of aggravation. <laughs> and they say, over the years, like, a couple of free bucks. <laughs> Don't just that. That's not funny, Bob. I've known guys that try to top themselves because of bastards like that. Well, I don't know how true it is. Pete probably put about what a lad down there. You know, grew up his legend like. <laughs> nice bunch of lads they were. Is there anyone you've ever met who wasn't nice, Bob? Oh, shit. Only you, Stevie. See, this is your pleasant journey. Keep smiling. What does it say? They're not waiting. What do you mean they're not waiting? Keep smiling. The sarcastic little bastard. What do they think they're doing? They can't just abandon us. down to the left. We can drop you down onto that. Come on, where's the boy scouting you? The boy scouting me buggered off when the others did. There's no way we'd get down there without Mayfield's help. The only way we'll get out of here is to climb back up. I distinctly heard the Colonel tell Lance Corporal Mayfield that the advance group should wait for us at the bottom, sir. And what did Lance Corporal Mayfield say? He didn't reply, sir. <laughs> Come on! Quiet, please. As far as I'm aware, the Colonel gave the order, and Lance Corporal Mayfield heard and understood it, sir. Thank you. How was the command given? I told him to wait for us. It was a very simple order. Couldn't have been misunderstood. By disregarding that order, he and Corporal Britton put the lives of their comrades in jeopardy. I call it the impetuosity of youth, if you like, but I expected a great deal more from them. They knew we wouldn't be able to progress without their help. By leaving us as they did, they condemned us to a slow death by starvation. That's it, Ron. Hang in there, Ron. You're nearly there. You all right? You bastard! You bastard! Are you all right, Ron? I think. I think I, I've cracked that rib. What? No! Come here. Track. There's up there. Come here. 
That's just an animal track, mate. It might not be. What about that Robert New Block? The one the colonel kept going on about. Yeah. He's right. That's an escape track. Are we talking about? Steve. Steve doesn't know Jack. Shit. That is an animal track. Look, we can't be more than 200 meters from the river. Why start climbing now? Because it's our way out of here. Come on, quick. Let's get out of here. I'm going to get to the river. So I can still finish this expedition. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Brett? You go mad. We got a chance to get out of here. I ain't going to die in here. No one is going to die. Well, you bastards might not, but you ain't got gangrene, have you? I smell. I don't know what it is. I can't get out of here. Oh, I can't stand it. They need me. Come on, Richard. Come on! Come on! Come on! I ain't gonna make it anyway. Not with him. Don't we, donkey? You're wrong, man. I've studied the maps. You're wrong. Oh, yeah. yeah. See ya. Come on! Pack of porridge oats, vitamin pills, an oxo cube, tin of sardines, oh, and a packet of diaralite. Looks like fish stew a la runny bottom tonight. And Bob and Richie out? Yep. <laughs> Pete's either eaten it, chucked it over waterfalls, or splattered it on the rocks. Anyway, it's all gone. Well, do what you can, mate. Eh? And, uh, give something the others. Get a scout on, okay? You can catch us up when you're finished. All right, but if you come to any sort of fork in the track, you wait by it, all right? Okay. All right, Bob? Yeah. Right. Come near again. The instructions to some man and Lance Corporal Mayfield were quite unequivocal. If you come to a fork, wait. That's right, sir. But we came to that fork. And they were long gone. So what did you do? So I, I was in pieces. Bob! Richie! Leave it, Steve. You can't leave it. Just man. leave it! You can't leave it! You've got to catch up with the others. 
We're not gonna catch him up, man. Why not? Easy, man. We went ahead to scout the track. We got lost, we couldn't re-establish contact. No. I cannot believe that. We lost each other. We thought they'd gone on. Well, why would they do that if they had an injured man with them? We ran out of bloody food. Being in my mind, we should never have set foot in there in the first place. The actual gully is cursed. It was trying to teach us a lesson. Right, if the local people won't go in there, there's got to be a damn good reason. <laughs> we should have shown a bit more respect. River. The river, Pete. The river. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've got something to tell you. You're going to be a dad. What's wrong? It came as a surprise to me too. But what does it matter if you love someone? on the far side. Just darkness. Urine is dark. Smells strong with ammonia. Body starting to feed on itself. Our return date is now well overdue. Why doesn't anybody come for it? My main meal yesterday was an indigestion tablet I found in the bottom of my pocket. We got ourselves down into this hole, but we can't get out. Not without Mayfield and Brett. We're trapped by rats in a suit. Ron's in pain, but mentally still strong. I think it's meant. I can only describe this place as. Evil. This room again. I bet you they're up to something. We want you to have this. But where did this come from? We have conserved our food. We have built up a secret store for emergencies. We want you to have some. Thank you. Thank you. I don't feel so bad now. I think I must have resigned myself to it. I always thought I'd be more scared of dying. But you? Well, I'd like to see my little girl again. That's about it. Why well, did you tell Bob that you didn't have any Ben? The way things are, I might as well not have her. She makes it so difficult. She changes the time. Place. When I turn up, she makes the kid upset. I mean, why? Yeah, but she's just doing that to get back in, man. It'll pass. <laughs> Wasn't too happy when she got pregnant. I thought it would cramp my style. I said, here's the money for an abortion, or better still, give us a coat hanger, I'll do it myself. But then when Daisy was born, I thank God. She was mine, you know? I didn't believe it was really important that I had a little family at home waiting for me. That was a lovely feeling. I was helping the Americans out there. Going across the border, taking on the drugs can't help. Just across the border, wait for them to transfer the stuff from the light aircraft before they get go across to Mexico with it. That AWACS guiding us in. It was a terrible night. 
to the kitchen, man. This guy, I slotted. Shot him through the eye. I thought I'd forgotten his face, but now I can't stop thinking about him. Lying there. Poor bastard wasn't dead. And I came home for my tour. I remember, I remember that day it was sunny. I thought my little girl would be out playing in the garden, but she wasn't. Go in the house, sitting in the front room, is this big hairy bastard drinking fucking tea. <laughs> he shot up and legged it when I walked in, I tell you, mate. I looked at her face and I knew, man. I didn't chuck her, Steve. She chucked me. Brit. Beautiful soldier in the British Army. How about that? Son. I'm hoping you never get to see this. But, uh, well, it's been a couple of days now since we've eaten properly, and, uh, well, there's one or two things I wanted to say, just in case we don't make it. I love you, Robert. You're the most smashing little boy any dad could wish for. And every minute I spent with you, I like to think of as a little gift from God. At least that's how it seems to me. I wouldn't have chosen to end my days here. <laughs> if I could have done that, I would have been home with you and Mum. But you have to take what he dishes out. I can't have no complaints of my life up to now. I just wish I could have spent a bit longer with you, son. <laughs> Anyway, be a good boy and look after your mum for me. And remember that I love you. And I always will. Always. All right. Well, bye now. Time for that now. Come on. Where's your Bergen gone? <gasps> oh, look at it down there. Come on. Oof. 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 
in a hole up in the up in the roof. That's where the light's coming through. Yeah. Well go ahead, hold your breath. It's pretty high up. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go and, I'll go and check the rock, right? Right. Kevin. Kevin, would you, uh, come here, please? I will. I need two witnesses. Major Foster has kindly agreed to be one. I would like you to be the other. Come along, man. It's only a signature. It's, it's not that. It's... Out with it, man. Which is my mind also.
Okay, Pete, you can move out. All right? Okay, man? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, I've got you, man. I've got you. Okay. 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 We did have a reservation, but I'm afraid we're a little late. Um, we got sort of held up. What is your name, please? Uh, can you just first check and see if our friends have booked in? That's Colonel Neal's party. One moment. Uh, Neil, uh, party of ten? Party of ten. We were expecting them on March 8, but none of them has arrived. Could we have some water, please? Yeah, you're too hot. 
Dragged in. Stevie. Bray. We've made it. Means that you look like shit. We feel like shit. When'd you get out? A couple of days ago. Yeah. Last night. We stayed overnight. Yeah. Someone had to drive us in this morning. Told you you should have stuck to the river. See me out. This old girl in the camp. She maybe put it into a jar for this stuff. Snake's venom or something. Oh, what bloody hell. I pulled it out. Dead flesh just dropped away. It was fantastic, wasn't it, Richard? It was like being healed like an ass. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, if you're not gonna ask them, I will. Where the fuck did you two go? Well, I've got to ask you that. We wait a few ages on that track. It's no fault for us, Stevie. Look, we didn't want to hang around waiting for you to offer us breakfast when we didn't have none. We went on, we got split up, we all made it out. It's one of the. He asked you, I heard him, to wait at any folk he came to. Now, we hit one after about two k, and you were nowhere. You yeah. were nowhere. We didn't see no folk. Did we read you left us in there? With an injured man. But you thought he'd hold you back. Now, we repair a bastard. I wish Pete. He's in the hospital. Hey, why the fuck should you care? You're out of order, see you, mate. Hey, you haven't finished with this one. You haven't heard the end of this one, mate. You haven't, mean. You're a pair of lying bastards. Weren't like that, Brit. What about the others, Brit? What about the Colonel? He's still missing. Looks like he took them in there. He actually did it. Yeah, I've just been on to one of the head sheds. They're jacking up some sort of joint rescue operation with the Malaysians. They were pretty surprised to hear from me. They still didn't know we were missing. What do you mean? No one had raised the alarm. Yeah, but what about Park, Park Air Quarters? They weren't even given a finished date. Bastard. Mad bastard. The gully is a very dangerous place. Our people do not go here. They believe the spirits will not allow them to pass through alive. I am the commanding officer here. And I have made my decision. We all go on. What does he mean? They're not waiting. Keep smiling, the sarcastic little bastard. What do they think they're doing? They can't just abandon us. So your conclusion is? Take more rations and stay with the river all the way through. Which is precisely what I intend to do. Good. And the homework. Steve! Steve!
you that? We may as well be out in the jungle again. Listen, boy. Stick that for yourself in there. You heard what Major Foster had to say. Were you or were you not given an order to stay? The Colonel gave me permission to abseil down the point of no return. And he did. Absolutely no doubt in my mind about that. I, um, I told him I wanted to push on. Look, I'd like to press on ahead. Where to? I'd like to get over the point of no return. If we take our time, even catches up easily. I'd like to get to grips with the descent, see what we're up against. Very well. Uh, but I want you to wait at the bottom. So he did tell you to wait? Yes, sir. And what was your response? We must regroup. Yes, but I can only wait for a limited time. After that, we'll have to move on or we'll run out of rations. I want you to wait. Okay, sir. Until tomorrow morning. What did he say to that? He, um... He didn't reply. He did not give me an order to wait. He didn't reply at all. I told him to wait for us. It was a very simple order. Couldn't have been misunderstood. And was Lance Corporal Mayfield Happy with the order? Well, Corporal Mayfield's feelings were entirely irrelevant. I gave him an order. I expected it to be a pain. The point I'm trying to make is, did Mayfield voice his discontent? I believe he may have said something. What did he say? I don't remember exactly. Well, then, roughly. I believe he did say something about only waiting for a limited amount of time. This contradicts Major Foster's evidence. Yes, well, perhaps he didn't hear Lance Corporal Mayfield. How could he not hear what Lance Corporal Mayfield said and yet still hear what you said? You would have to ask him that. So Mayfield did say that he could only wait for a limited time. But I can only wait for a limited time. After that, we'll have to move on or we'll run out of rations. I want you to wait. OK, sir. Until tomorrow morning. I want you to wait. Yes, until tomorrow morning. <coughs> I want you to wait. Yes, until tomorrow morning, and then we have to move. <coughs> <coughs> Whatever he said, the point is, I have given him an order. The cliff face is called the point of no return. Once we'd committed ourselves to it, we had no option but to push on. If we'd waited for the Colonel's party, we'd have put everybody's lives in jeopardy, ours and them. Why are you so certain about that? Could it not be argued that by waiting for them to catch up, there'd have been safety in numbers? I didn't see it that way, sir. Did you doubt Colonel Neal's ability to command the expedition? No, sir. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Um, Corporal Britton, firstly, I'd like to congratulate you on bringing your party successfully through the gully, therefore achieving the aims of this expedition. It was a tremendous one. Would you not, however, agree that it is the duty of the stronger members of an expedition to help the weaker one? Yes, sir. And would you not also agree that by pushing on in an aggressive fashion, as you and Lance Corporal Mayfield did from day one, that you never really gave this expedition as a whole, as it was originally conceived, a chance of succeeding? Yes, sir. That is not true. He never gave it a chance by bringing the Hong Kong land. Quiet, please. Well, they should never have been there, sir. You didn't want us to catch you up, did you, Corporal Britton? You didn't want that because we'd have held you back. We'd have cramped your style, wouldn't we, Britton? Any more questions, Colonel Neal? Yes, sir. 
I have something I'd like to ask. It seems to me that by your actions, you effectively assumed control of the expedition from Colonel Neal. It was now up to you to get everybody through. Is that right? Yes, sir. Did you enjoy this extra responsibility? At the time, sir, yes. And now? And now, I think... I perhaps took the right decision that day, sir. But for the wrong reason. If we had stayed and waited and got trapped with the Colonel's party, as it transpired, no one would have started to look for us. At least not until it was too late. So we probably would have all starved to death in there, sir. But the point is, I didn't know that at the time. I didn't expect to see you again. Well, you didn't follow it on the telly. We haven't got a telly. Is, um, is Daisy in? No, she's at play school. Do you want to come in and wait? Yeah, that'd be nice. On Tuesday, a network first special takes soldiers Bob Mann and Richard Mayfield back to the Jungle Valley that nearly became their graveyard for the first time since their ill-fated adventure. That's Return to the Place of the Dead, network first on Tuesday at 10.45. So much harder to go. To give up their souls And others who won't play the game And the constant reminder of all that you've missed From everyone you'll never know It's hard to stay in with a popular crowd But 